Welcome, my darlings, to my humble chateau. Please make yourself very comfortable. Relax your mind and release your imagination to me. I will bring you a story to entrance and entertain. Perhaps a frightening one. Perhaps a steampunk. Perhaps a bit of mythology. Anyway, sit back. Enjoy. Enjoy. And subscribe. The Officer Sarah Barkley Chronicles, Part 12. In case you don't know, I'm a rookie cop working the night shift in a small rural town in Pennsylvania. With a little over two years on the job, I'm still considered a rookie since most of the guys on my department have 10 to 15 years on the force. I keep getting dispatched to unexplained calls. Being a rural town, we have plenty of corn mazes, haunted houses, and hay rides this time of year. Since Halloween was last week, Farmers have been spending their time clearing their cornfields. It's pretty common to find some interesting things during this process, such as Oakley sunglasses, jewelry, or hats. It's funny how terrified people get when they're chased by a chainsaw with no chain and tend to lose articles all over the place. Farmers typically don't call the police when they find various items in their abandoned cornfields come November, but this year was different. I knew I was nearly done with my shift when I saw the sun began to rise. I grabbed my morning coffee to get me through the last hour of shift when dispatch got on the radio. Dispatch to 1034. 1034, go ahead. Can you respond to... For a farmer who found something in his corn maze while he was out clearing his field... 1034, show me en route. I wondered why dispatch didn't tell me what the something was that the farmer found in his field. Usually dispatch is descriptive in their radio communications, but the only time they aren't descriptive are when they are concerned about the media monitoring the radio and don't want to say certain trigger words. I remember one night after a murder scene, I got on the radio and advised dispatch there was still blood splatter on the scene, and we needed fire to return to the scene to hose down an area. Sergeant Oakley called me into his office later that night and made it very clear that I was never to say blood on the radio again. What a crock of shit, if you ask me. Anyway, I responded to the corn maze and met with a man wearing tall overalls and a gray goatee. Hello, officer. Thanks for coming. I'm Ronald Baxter. Mr. Baxter was standing in front of his house. Nice to meet you. I'm Officer Barkley. I met Mr. Baxter's handshake. What did you find in your field this morning? I, uh, I found a skeleton. Of what? I think a human. Here, I'll show you. I had my doubts. I thought maybe he found some bones of an old dog that was buried years ago. Mr. Baxter began walking towards his cornfield as the sun continued to rise, casting pink and yellow hues over his fields. We walked for approximately ten minutes. We only made about two or three turns in the corn stalk since most of it had been cut down. Then Mr. Baxter stopped in front of me. He slowly lifted his hand and pointed towards the ground. There. I looked down and saw a shallow hole filled with skeletal bones. There was no doubt that this was a human skeleton. When did you find this? 
I asked. About an hour or so ago. At first I thought it was some random leftover Halloween decoration. I took a closer look and realized there was no way this was a Halloween decoration. This is a goddamn human skeleton! Mr. Baxter spit some of his sunflower seeds out onto the ground as he spoke. He was right. This was a human skeleton. I thanked Mr. Baxter for calling the police and told him he was free to go back up to his house while I called for backup to process the scene. Mr. Baxter nodded and slowly made his way back towards his farmhouse. He casually waved as he walked away and quietly yelled, I'm sure my wife is waiting on the front porch for my return so that we can eat breakfast. Come grab me if you need anything, officer. I was about to get on my radio when I remembered Sergeant Oakley's warning about not disclosing too graphic of details over the radio. Instead, I pulled out my cell phone and dialed Sergeant Oakley's number. I had no service. I began walking back towards the farmhouse to try and get reception. I stared at my cell phone, holding it in the air. I felt someone grab my shoulder from behind. I whipped around, expecting to see Mr. Baxter, but no one was there. A sudden rush of chills shot down my spine. I turned back to continue towards the farmhouse, but I was face to face with corn stalks nearly eight feet tall. I spun back around, this time in a full circle. All I saw were corn stalks. Where was the farmhouse? I looked back down at my cell phone. Still no reception. <sighs> Screw Sergeant Oakley's advice. I was just going to use my radio for backup. I pressed the mic button and heard the low-pitched dial tone that either meant someone else was talking at the same time as me or that I had no reception for transmission. I released the button and listened. No one else was on the radio. I pressed the mic again and heard the same low-pitched tone. I had no reception for transmission. I needed to find my way out of this corn maze so that I could call for backup. The ground was still wet from the rain we got this past week. My boots suctioned to the ground with every step I took. I made a right turn, then a left, heading in the same direction towards the farmhouse. Dead end. I turned around and tried to go the other way. I made another right, then left turn. Pulled my phone out of my pocket. Still no service. I swear I heard Mr. Baxter yell for his dog, Lady, to return home for breakfast. My walk turned into a slight jog. I headed towards the sound of his voice. Dead end. Nearly ten minutes passed and I couldn't find my way out of the corn maze. I repeatedly tried my cell phone and my radio with no luck. My anxiety kicked in, my breaths grew short, and my vision grew sharp. I stopped and closed my eyes to focus on all the sounds around me. I took in every sound and every vibration. I reopened my eyes and started towards the sound of a tractor in the distance. I turned left, then right, right again, and left. No dead ends. I continued. Then I heard a piercing scream. I froze for a moment before I turned around to face the direction of the piercing scream. I spun around and stared at a wall of corn stalks. What happened to the path I just walked down? I began to lose track of time and didn't know how long I'd been trying to escape this corn maze. I gave up on trying to stay within the corn maze and made my own path. I began sprinting through the field and held my hands in front of me to shield the corn stalks from hitting me in the face. I was becoming out of breath when I finally reached a break in the corn stalks and was back on path. I took a break to regain my composure and catch my breath. 
I looked to my left, then to my right. My eyes dropped down and I saw it. The skeleton was laying on the ground in front of me, to my right. I was back where I started. I sat down and held my head between my hands. Should I scream for help? I was embarrassed. I'm supposed to be the face of bravery. I didn't want to sound like a terrified girl to this farmer. It had to have been nearly 30 minutes by this point, if not longer. I screamed. I screamed so loud that I felt my vocal cords shaking. No response. What am I going to do? I thought out loud. I stood up, walked straight, figured if I walked long enough in a straight line, I would reach the end of the field. Finally, I saw it. I saw Mr. Baxter's farmhouse. Mr. Baxter was on his porch with his wife when he saw me approach. Officer, did you call for backup then? No, I had no service out in the field. I'm embarrassed it took me so long to find my way back here and asked to use your home phone to call my sergeant. Mr. Baxter smiled and responded. I only left you a minute ago. I'm not too sure why you'd be embarrassed about that. So quoth this raven. My darlings, I have reached the end of Barkle's 52's posts. Um, if she writes more, I will read more, but for the moment we are on at least a hiatus. Please give this video a like if you would like to hear more of this sort of thing. And comment. I always love to hear from you and will always do my best to comment back. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and ring the little bell so you know when to come up and see me. And I will see you next time, my darling. Probably tomorrow with the ending of Panikia. Bye-bye, <laughs> my darling.